Hey guys, welcome to my latest video on index numbers. So in my last video, I talked about negative indices. Now, negative exponents are one of the trickiest concepts to grasp in index numbers. So if you've got that down pat, then you should be set for this video. The reason I like to teach negative exponents first before I go on to explain the index laws about multiplication and division is because understanding negative exponents makes this next part much much easier. So I'll start you guys off today with a very simple example. Suppose we have 3 squared times 3 cubed. Suppose we wanted to simplify this expression somehow. Well, based on what we know of index numbers, 3 squared means that there are two 3's multiplied together, and 3 cubed means that there are three 3's multiplied together. So we could write this in expanded notation like so. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. You can see that this is identical to 3 squared times 3 cubed, it's just a longer way of writing it. But there's something else going on here. By expanding this, we can now see that we have five threes multiplied together. So we can also write this as three to the power of five. Because exponentiation is all about repeated multiplication, it makes sense that if we have two index numbers multiplied together where the base is the same, we can simply add the exponents. In the example of three squared times three cubed, that's like saying if we have two threes multiplied together and then we multiply three more threes, we're going to end up with five threes multiplied together or 3 to the power of 5. In other words, 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 3 makes 3 to the power of 2 plus 3 equals 5. If it's not the same base though, this doesn't work. If we had 3 squared times 4 cubed, we can expand this to show 3 times 3 times 4 times 4 times 4, but you can't combine this into one index number. There are two different bases here. You can't get one index number of base and exponent when there's two different bases. I know some of you find it much easier to understand this with a rule in front of you, so here's the rule. a to the power of m times a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So again, remember these are symbols. When we have two index numbers with the same base, and remember it has to be the same base or else this won't work, and these numbers are multiplied together, we can write it as one new index number where the base is unchanged and the exponent is the sum of the original two exponents. And it doesn't just have to be two index numbers either. If you had 3 squared times 3 cubed times another 3 squared, you could write this as 3 to the power of 2 plus 3 plus 2, which is 3 to the power of 7. Straightforward, right? Now what if you were dividing index numbers? Suppose you had 3 cubed divided by 3 squared. Now what do you do? Well, again, we can expand this to 3 times 3 times 3 over 3 times 3. If you remember how to simplify fractions, you'd know that you can divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number, and it would create an equivalent fraction. So basically, you can cancel out some of these 3s as long as you make sure you're doing it to both sides of the fraction. So we can cross 1 3 off the top and then 1 3 off the bottom, and we still got a couple more, so we can do that one more time. Now we're finished, because whatever we do to the numerator, we have to do to the denominator. If we cross off the remaining 3, there's no 3 in the denominator to cancel it out, so it won't be balanced. You can also think of it like this. If we multiply by 3 just to divide by 3 again, it's going to cancel out. So this divide by 3 will cancel out this multiplication here, and this one will cancel out that one, and oops, we run out of things we can cancel. So our answer in both cases is simply 3. If we take a look back at our original question, 3 cubed divided by 3 squared is equal to 3, or 3 to the power of 1 if we want to write it in index form. Here's the rule for dividing indices by the same base. a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. It looks like the opposite of the first rule, but actually it's the exact same rule. Bear with me, I'm about to blow your mind. In maths, there is technically no such thing as subtraction and division. What? Let me explain. Every subtraction can be written as addition with negative numbers, and every division can be written as multiplication, but with fractions. For example, 3 minus 2 is the same as saying 3 plus negative 2, and 3 divided by 2 is the same as saying a half of 3, or 3 times a half. So if 3 over 2, or 3 divided by 2, is the same as saying 3 times 1 over 2, and we know that's true, 3 cubed divided by 3 squared is the same as saying 3 cubed times 1 over 3 squared, right? Remember our negative exponent rule? If we flip an index number to find its reciprocal, the sign changes from negative to positive, and vice versa, right? 1 over 3 squared is the same as 3 to the power of negative 2. So 3 cubed over 3 squared is equal to 3 cubed times 3 to the power of negative 2. And according to our multiplication rule, when we're multiplying index numbers with the same base, we can just add the exponents together. So we'd have 3 to the power of 
3 plus negative 2 equals 1, so we'd have 3 to the power of 1. You don't have to understand how all of this works, but in my opinion, understanding negative exponents makes this so much easier. It makes it easier to understand problems like this one. Suppose we have 4 to the power of 4 over 4 to the power of 6. If we just follow the rule, we would get 4 to the power of 4 minus 6, or 4 to the power of negative 2. And we would write this as 1 over 4 squared because that looks a lot more pleasing to the eye than 4 to the power of negative 2. But if you want to see how it works, we can expand it to show 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 over 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Times 4. By cancelling out all the pairs of 4s that are in the numerator and the denominator, we would get 1 over 4 times 4, or 1 over 4 squared. Can you see how 4 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 over 4 squared? Like, if you didn't understand negative exponents, this would confuse the hell out of you, I think. By the way, this is also a good way to show that the zero exponent rule makes sense. Suppose we have 2 squared over 2 squared. Well, if we use the rule, this is equal to 2 to the power of 2 minus 2, or 2 to the power of 0, right? From what we know about fractions, any time we divide a number by itself, we get 1. 3 divided by itself is 1, 100 divided by itself is 1, a half divided by itself is 1. You know, it's like saying how many halves are in a half, well, 1. So 2 squared divided by itself is 1, or in other words, how many 2 squareds are in 1 2 squared? 1. That's why 2 to the power of 0 is 1. That's why anything to the power of 0 is 1, in case you needed more proof. We'll try one more, a little more complicated this time. Suppose we had 2 cubed times 3 squared over 2 times 3 to the power of 5. So there's a few ways we can do this. The first method is to use the index law about dividing index numbers with the same base. This 2 down the bottom is basically 2 to the power of 1, so we would have 2 to the power of 3 minus 1 times 3 to the power of 2 minus 5. We would have 2 squared times 3 to the power of negative 3, or we'd have 2 squared times 1 over 3 cubed, or basically just 2 squared over 3 cubed. Some of you who might be a little quicker at maths might have started to notice an easy pattern here. When you have a situation like this, you can keep the index number with the larger exponent where it is, and you can just subtract from there. You can keep the 3 to the power of 5 on the bottom, and just take away the 2. And this works because, again, this is like moving the 3 squared down, flipping it over and flipping the sign while you're at it, making it 3 to the power of negative 2. See how understanding negative exponents makes this so much easier? I'll give you guys some more example questions to try from here. I want to see how you go with them. That was it for today. I hope you guys found it helpful. Um, I'll be posting more videos soon about scientific notation and fractional exponents. So please let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you next time at Sneezy Teachers. Bye!